Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Winnipeg Jets franchise mode here in NHL 24. So in last episode, obviously, we had a little bit of a tough first round with the Dallas Stars who went on to win the Stanley Cup as we kind of expected because we had a really good stretch near the end of the season. We made the playoffs even after we made all those big trades at the deadline. And uh, yeah, our team is going to be going into a pretty big rebuilding stage, I think. Obviously, we do have some good pieces to build around already in the system because we did get like Michael Misa from LA when we traded Kyle Connor. But uh, we are going to be going into even more of a rebuild this offseason. So offloading guys like Mark Scheifele, hopefully Connor Hellbuck as well. I did go ahead and address our trading block already. So I will show you guys it right now. As you can see, I added pretty much everybody that's the older players on our team. Nick Hague is one that I don't know if I will trade yet because he is signed for five years. We did recently sign him to that. And he is only 27, but everybody else here is above 30. Josh Morrissey is one of these guys that I still don't really want to move. So it would take a good offer for me to move him. But these three guys especially would be good to move. Victor Hedman has been dropping off since we acquired him in free agency. And then obviously Hellebuck and Shifley still on six years left is a little bit scary considering both of them are on decline i think so there's that and you can see the surplus also 28 to 50 so we're giving up pretty much everybody that's exact and then once we want players that are 17 to 27 and all picks so hopefully we can get some pretty interesting offers in this off season so we can kind of nuke it a little bit uh, but like I said, we do have at least some young players that we will start to build around on this team. Uh, I'll show you actually which players I have in mind to keep around here, the rebuild around. So guys, for example, like Cole Perfetti, obviously he's one of those guys. Uh, Gabe Velarde might leave this team this offseason as well. He's another guy that could get potentially dealt, or he might end up just being a guy that we qualify. And if we get a uh, potential compensation for him, I might honestly take it. It depends on anything, but he still might be a guy that's here for like year one of the rebuild and then dealt at the deadline this upcoming season. So that's maybe something I'd look into. Uh, we also do have Lucius, who's obviously going to be part of the future rebuild. Gustafson might be here for a few years as well, kind of like Velarde and then shipped out. Uh, Kurashev is pretty much just a depth option, doesn't really matter. But Michael Musa is the main piece of this rebuild. Him and Perfetti down the middle would be really great. So very excited to see what that's going to be like down the road. Also, Logan Stakeoven should be part of this rebuild in a way if he continues to develop. He is a 78 at 23, so I don't know if he's going to develop a whole lot more. Uh, but I am hoping that he can be maybe a good third line center, at least behind Misa and also Perfetti. Left wing wise, obviously Michelli is going to be here for a little bit of the rebuild as well. Maybe the first two years, maybe even longer than that. I do feel like I want to resign him for like a three, four year deal. Uh, but it depends on how his performance is. Uh, we also do have Chinnikov, who's obviously part of it because we did give him an eight-year extension a few year seasons ago. And he's going to be signed long term, so might as well. Um, and then on the defensive side of things, obviously, guys like Hainola, Kairu, one mark maybe even for a little bit will be part of this rebuild. And uh, I am very excited just to see how this team ends up looking once we get to the point where we're back in the playoffs again with a much younger squad. And probably a lot of these guys that we had on our roster that won cups with us, Shifley and Morrissey, might be all retired by then, which would be kind of interesting. So anyways, that's that. Let's get into your guys' comments and see what you guys have to say about last episode. So the first comment is from Michael Dose, who says, Hella Buck was hella good in the playoffs. Was hoping we could use some cheese, uh, or we could cheese some teams, but man, VC was a beastie. Um, okay, <laughs> uh, that uh, first pun points to you for that. Uh, but uh, yeah, it would have been nice to be able to obviously go on past the first round and all that. But honestly, at least we have that one Stanley Cup, so it's not the biggest concern. Uh, but Jimmy VC was a very weird piece to this team because he was a guy that we called up from the minors. We had him in the AHL, I think. And then we called him up once we made some pre uh, pretty big trades. And he actually did well for us in the playoffs. Like, I think he had like three or four points. Uh, but yeah, it was very not the best playoffs for our team. Like, we were more on the defensive side of things than anything else. The next comment is from Tropical Gamer who says, Sup, Snipe. I saw one in the uh, older videos of this series for your scout. You should look at the second page when you sign them and assign them to some of the regions they have best chances to do good in your draft. And uh, that's the old way of doing scouting from what I was told. I don't remember how long ago at this point. I'll show you guys right now. Is that when you're looking at your scouts and stuff like that, it does not matter at all about this page. Not at all. Because of ver eventually the player, uh, these uh, scouts, they improve their region uh, like uh, 
region rating, I guess you could say, uh, once you actually have them in there for a prolonged period of time. Like, they're not going to be good at first. But, uh, for instance, like, uh, I don't really know this um, Madsen guy maybe was never really that good at the WHL, but after a few years in the WHL, that uh, number should change to an A+, plus from, like, maybe it was a C before. So... I don't think it matters that much at the moment, but uh, honestly, that's the old way of what I was using it for, is I was always looking at these and seeing, oh, who's good at this region, but I don't think it actually matters. I could be wrong with that, but that's from what I've heard at least, is that they actually grow in the region once you assign them. It just takes a few seasons. The next comment is from Sanro Otaku. It says, Dallas getting revenge on Vegas for last year's conference finals. Otherwise, for the Jets, uh, this was an unexpected result, or not an unexpected result. Now it's time to embrace the tank and go full on rebuild. Free up as much cap space as, pra uh, as practical so you could have it for the upcoming uh, youth movement. Are there any higher up picks in this class that you could get uh, if you package up two first renders you have? The prospects where you are drafting now don't look all that great. So um, there is a chance we could try and move up since we do have two first round picks. Um, I don't know how high we would be able to move up, and it would depend if the team that uh, we'd be trading with actually wants to, us to move up or wants to move out from that spot. Um, right now, since we're like 22nd, 23rd, well, there, there's not really that much. There's like McCauley, who's just a generic top six. Um, Draper, who's just going to top, si or top 10, doesn't even look that great, to be honest. Yeah, in general, I don't think it's worth moving up much. Unless we actually wanted to get one of those medium elite players, but obviously mo moving up to like top five, we'd have to give up a whole lot. So I don't know if anybody's going to want Shifley for like a top five pick, to be honest. So um, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to move up to get somebody like Vishnevsky, Jazz, this Garen guy, Per Jogan. Um, but it's kind of interesting. I didn't even realize when we were looking at this draft class that a lot of these players are like from like uh, former USSR countries, I guess, in a sense, because Belarus, I don't know what country this is. I think it's like Lithuania. Let me actually look on my computer while I have my face came off screen so my face doesn't go bright as, um, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that is Lithuania. Okay, so there's two Lithuanians in this draft and a Belarusian, which is interesting. So there is a lot of country representation. And speaking of country representation, there's another comment from Flame Husky. This is the last comment we got to go over. He says, a Croatian Rafalski. Oh, give me break, LOL. I would take a shot and draft Grosik, but he, then again, he could be one of those weird low six gems. You could also trade one of your picks for a draft prospect in case the draft quality looks poor. Also take Scarlet, the goaltender. So, yeah, he shouted out the Croatian Rafalski. And, yeah, it's a little bit weird when you see guys like Rafalski being used in Croatia because... Obviously, you think of Brian Rafalski, who is an American, and he, he's obviously not going to be uh, one of these guys that should have a Croatian last name, but, I mean, at least it's not the most egregious example. Like, if you see, like, a Joe Smith, for example, from uh, North Korea, that's a lot worse. <laughs> so, I don't know. I hope they eventually get to region-specific names, but, um, yeah, basically, I think we might end up taking Rafalski with one of our picks. He does look very good. Um, and then he was also mentioning about Grosik, so we might honestly just keep with our spots, depending if teams don't really want us to move up. And we might take a chance with Grosik. I don't think he's going to be a low six, because low sixes usually aren't in round one. So he should be a low elite. So we'll probably end up taking Grosik and Rafalski. And then he was also mentioning about Scarlet, which was the goalie I had pinned. There is a lot of goalies supposed to go in this draft, but we do know for sure that Scarlet's medium elite. But there is supposed to be literally like... Yeah, there's actually a shit ton of goalies. Holy crap. There's usually not this much that early on. Like in the top 100, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nine goalies in the top 100. A lot of the time you see goalies going at the like 100 mark to start, but you have a lot of them in like the top 80s, which is kind of crazy. So Logan Scarlett's likely going to be the one just because he's 17 and medium elite, but we'll probably take him with our second round pick we have because we don't have a lot of late round picks it's more early picks but who knows maybe we could get some if we make some trades at the draft so let's uh hop into this draft and uh resign stage and see what's and our team ends up looking like by the end of it because it could be completely different by that stage so 
Let's go to the trade finder and see if we got any interesting offers. Do our trade due diligence before we actually do the draft because I don't care about the draft as much at the moment. I care about seeing if we could actually ship out our older players or if we get any offers for these older players. Um, so if I go find trade with our current block, there is no offers for Shifley, which is not great. So I might have to go open block on him. What about Victor Hedman? No trades found either with our current block. I guess I should have made be made our block a little bit better, but it is what it is. Um, hmm. Who was the other guys? Oh yeah, Hellebuck was the other big one. Let's see. No trades found. Okay, we have to probably do open trading block, and there's nothing still found for Hellebuck. Okay, I might have to look for some trades on my own, which kind of sucks because that means this episode might end up being very long. None trade founds for Shifley either. What about Victor Hedman? Hey, there's one found for Victor Hedman at least, but it's at open block wise. Brock Nelson, he's another old guy with a four year contract. No thanks. Ia Follow would bring him back. No thank you. Tara Vinen, and then there's Hartman in a seventh. None of those trades are worth it because those all are long term deals. Hartman's the shorter term, so it does free us up $5 million in cap space. That's the only good thing. Um, aside from that, the rest of these deals are too long term. I mean, we could do the EA follow one and bring him right back in and just trade him again. But I honestly don't think that's worth it. So we're going to try and see if we could find some deals on our own right, I guess. Because for some reason, we are not getting thrown anything. There might be one though for Morrissey, potentially. Let's take a look and see what we could get for Morrissey. I didn't want to flip him away yet. But it wouldn't be a bad option to trade him away already. But I still wouldn't mind holding on to him for a little bit at least. Let's see. No trades found with our current block. Never mind. But what about open block? No trades found either. I am kind of surprised that we didn't even get thrown a single offer. Does any team want us to move up though? Because we do have our two late picks. We could try and move up to like 12. But I don't think his draft class is really worth it. There's also Tampa at 18. And then there's also like the Islanders and Bruins at 8 and 9. I don't think we're going to be able to get into that spot. But let's uh, try and trade away our top players here. We don't have a whole lot of time to actually trade them. Uh, but let's see if there's anybody who wants Shifley. Boston does over cap. Buffalo does over cap. Carolina does over cap. Columbus does over cap. The salary cap shouldn't matter in the offseason I feel like. But still every team that wants them right now would be over the cap. So that's probably why we don't have a whole lot of offers for him is because a lot of teams can't really afford him. Hmm. Man, this sucks. This salary cap situation is not great. Um, is there any team with a low cap that would actually be okay to take him on? Potentially, like, there must be somebody. Chicago has a lot of cap space, but I honestly don't think that it would make sense for them to acquire him. They did make the playoffs a couple times, so maybe it would make sense. And, of course, the first overall pick has interrupted me. So, Vishnevsky going to the St. Louis Blues. Huh. Okay. So, there is... What's his first name? Kirill. I can't even take a look and see if he has... He doesn't actually have any X-Factors. Never mind. Okay. That's kind of weird. Um, let's go back to... Find Trade. Or Offer Trade, not Find Trade. Hmm. We might honestly have to hold on to these guys till free agency. Which is not great. But we might have to make our trades after the draft. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look at uh, Connor Hellebuck. Is there any teams that want him that we can move to? Chicago wants him, and they have the cap space for him. Okay, we might be able to work something with Chicago. Um, and I already see a piece that would be good to bring back. But the thing is, we are going to be drafting a medium league goalie. But uh, this guy, Gabriel Beg, his name is... He usually pans out to being a really good goalie in franchise mode. It would make sense to add him as part of this deal. So we get a goalie prospect in. So we'll add him to the deal. I guess Chicago wants to be more good right now in a sense. They don't want to move him, but... Hmm. They do want to move some prospects. They do want to also move some older guys. Is there anything else I could take in from this deal? I don't want to rob them of their good players, though. Nick Ehlers is actually signed there, which is interesting. So that's where Ehlers went. Hmm. Uh, Patrick Kane back in Chicago again. Emil Hemming would be interesting, but I don't really know if it makes sense for Chicago to offload a lot of their good prospects. But it looks like they're a good team right now. A lot of 80s. So maybe moving Hemming isn't a bad idea for them. We take in Hemming. We take in Dag. Is that even? 
it might be even. I want to see if I could add maybe a pick to this deal as well. It would be nice to uh, get ourselves... Let's say like an, a third rounder for next year, maybe, from Arizona. We'll see if that works. I don't know if it will. So the trade would be Deg Hemming and a third for Hellebuck. Will it work? That's rejected too far off. Okay, what if I remove the third round pick? Just Deg and Hemming straight up. So two prospects. Accepted. Okay. Hey, that's a really good deal. That's a really good deal, I think. So we get ourselves a medium only goalie prospect. And Gabriel Degg, who usually pans out really well in franchise mode, I've seen. Um, and then we also acquire ourselves, uh, who was that top six? We also get ourselves a prospect, which is good. Oh, yeah, it was Emil Hemming. So, yeah, we get ourselves some really good, solid players. And then Chicago gets themselves a goalie to be a good team right now. Yes, it sucks trading within our division, but I think that was a good deal. As Jass goes to Nashville, in case you guys were interested in Maxim Jass. Is that like Maxim Ass? <laughs> uh, it's funny. A lot of X factors on this guy. Yeah, this guy's probably going to be better than Vishnevsky at this rate, I think. Uh, let's go back to offer trades. So we did free up a lot of cap space moving out Hellebuck. That was a good deal for our team. Oh, yeah, I was going to look at potential Nick Hag deals as well. Hmm, maybe I should go to find trade and see if there's anything for Nick Hag. Because Nick Hag being a bit younger might have more interest from other teams. Let's see. Any interest from anybody on Egg? Yeah, there is there is actually a lot of offers from on Open Block. <clears throat> so that means uh, that we might actually be able to get something good for him. Let's don't do Open Block. Let's do it in our own block. 21 offers. Okay, so a second, a third in Harrison. Perica, Nido, Wahlberg, and Komarov. That one's kind of interesting. A second, Bolle, and Forsmark. Renas is second, and Beagle second, Canazio, Pinelli. There's a lot of things to look at. A late first-round pick this year, Perry and Murley. Hmm. A second, a third, and Bicker, Villeneuve, Danford. Hmm. There is definitely some interesting ones. Lume. Yeah, there's some top six forwards. First, a third, first overall. That's not bad, 31st. Hey, we get the other Misa brother. It actually could be interesting. I think they're brothers, right? Obviously, same last name. That might be one I want to look at. It wouldn't be a bad idea to have both Mises on the team. That would be kind of neat. 74 at 20. And then we also get a top six defenseman prospect in Gustavo Graham, who went first round. So he might actually end up paying out. You know what? We're going to do this one. Nick Hegg, best of luck in New York. Why not? Now we have both Mises. <laughs> that's actually really cool I don't think I've ever had uh, two brothers in the series in a long time so now we have Michael Misa and Luke Misa I'm pretty sure both of them are brothers if they aren't that would be a big missed opportunity <laughs> but um, there we go Nick Hag has been shipped out um, now we want to look about trading with Shifley but we are going to get interrupted so might as well wait for Calgary to make their selection at number 3 but so far, we're doing pretty good in terms of uh, offloading those players. Gavin McKenna going to the Flames at three. We obviously know he's a real player. So there is McKenna. Um, let's go back to offer trade and see if we can get rid of Shifley. I think Shifley is going to be harder to move away. Um, I will look at Hedman deals, I guess, now since we've already looked at Shifley deals. Let's see. Arizona has the cap space. They are interested in him. But we know that their offers were pretty bad. Do they have any prospects that they're willing to move out? Um, no, it's all older guys on their block. Hmm. Trying to think of what we could acquire back in this deal. They have 15 million in cap space, so that would actually eat a lot of their cap space. Hmm. I want somebody a bit more realistic, maybe. A lot of the other teams that are interested, though, are way over the cap right now. Actually, they can be over the cap, I guess, right now, because Dallas is 6 million over the cap. So I guess some teams can be over the cap. Or all teams can be over the cap during the offseason. So that's actually good. I didn't even realize that was a thing. Hey, Minnesota has interest. They have a lot of cap space. Or not a lot of cap space. They actually do have a lot of cap space. $20 million apparently. So um, what do you guys have that's interesting? Let's see. They do have some prospects that are maybe intriguing. Uh, this Kampulainen? 
Kumpalainen. Rasmus Kumpalainen. I think he's probably a real player. Poye. Ah, oh, it's Justin Poye. Uh, Lambos doesn't seem to be developing well. Hmm. Me and Malik, goalie prospect. We already have one, and we're going to be drafting another, so no thank you. What about skaters matching block? Not really any of those players actually do match my block, but thank you for that anyways. Um, Kumpalainen might be interesting. Might be. But I don't really know. We take in Kumpalainen. And maybe a pick. We don't want to move any early picks for next year, future years, really, it seems like. So, Kumpalainen and maybe there's another team I could trade him to. Let me just check. Nashville also. I want to see if there's any good young players on the block. Or not necessarily on the block, but other younger players. Okay, there is some interesting ones in Nashville. I think they are going through a rebuild, though. If I'm not mistaken, I wish I would have said they're like last season's record because that would be interesting to know. Evangelista would be a good piece to add into this team, but he's already 24 as a thing, so he would be more of a stopgap. We're going to get interrupted here again by the Chicago Blackhawks, who have the fourth overall selection. I don't know why they wanted Hellebuck if they have the fourth overall pick, unless they acquired this fourth overall pick. I don't remember. But yeah, I don't know why they wanted Hellebuck if they are doing so bad. So there is Garen. Dante Guerin looks pretty good. Good player for them to probably put next to Connor Bedard. Let me go back to Victor Hedman and also Nashville. Oh boy, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make any more trades in this episode or not. I hope I can. I know this episode's already 20 something minutes in and we haven't even got through this draft yet, so I don't want it to be super long for you guys, but I guess you could understand if I'm trying to wheel and deal here. Because I didn't really, I wasn't able to pre-scale trades, obviously, because you can't do that anymore, really. Um, hmm. Yeah, there's no way we could get this Jazz guy they just drafted, so. <laughs> uh, Motto. Yeah, they might not be a great team, so I don't know if it would make sense for them to actually acquire him. Let's see. I don't want to trade him to a team that would be over the cap. Seattle has a lot of cap space. Yeah, 24, Riker Evans. Ooh, Irons. Sawyer Irons. And he's second rounder. He's probably not going to pan out. Hmm. I honestly don't know if there's any more trades I could do. I might go back to Minnesota, though, to be honest, just to see. Victor Hedman hit <laughs> Tampa Bay. Send him right back to Tampa. That would be funny. Um. Okay, so let's go back to Minnesota for a second here because Kumpalainen at least was interesting. So we take on Kumpalainen. And let's go draft picks. Let's see if we can get a future second round pick, maybe. That might be actually too much value on their side. They probably would say no. Um, let's take actually just, I guess, your third round pick for this year. Yeah, why not? Come flying in on the third for Victor Hedman. This should work. That's rejected. Too far off. Okay. Um, that's not what I expected. What if I give you guys a later pick that I'm not going to use, like one of our seventh rounders? That should maybe get it done. Too far off. Hmm. I don't really know if I need those sixth rounders and stuff, to be honest. So basically, we're just moving up in the draft in this a little bit. Sweden so just a touch. So if I gave up my fifth round pick, we move up two rounds and we get a top six forward prospect. Let's do it. Hey, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Just a touch. I'm not giving up a fourth rounder. I'll give up a fifth and a seventh before I do that. There we go. Perfect. Victor Hedman's off to Minnesota. Okay. We have successfully traded a bunch of players. We freed up a ton of cap space, as you can see on the left hand side of the screen. Yeah, we've only spent $47 million on our current roster, and a good chunk of it's on Mark Shifley. Who I'll probably end up looking to trade in next episode because at this rate I don't think uh, I could find a way to flip them. I could potentially, but it, I don't know. Hmm. We would need a, we're gonna probably need some cap oils on this team this off season. But there's Parajogan who just went at five. Let me see if I could trade Shifley still, but I don't think there's a way to move Shifley yet. We've almost traded everybody that's on our block except for Morsi, which like I said I don't want to move Morsi necessarily yet. Let me just look through these uh, teams again. 
Yeah, most of the teams that are interested in Shifley are way over the cap, and I don't want to screw them over. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to wait till next episode to move him out. Yeah, for now, I think we'll hold on to him. But uh, everybody else has been shipped out, which is good. Okay, now we can finally get into the draft portion of this episode. Let's see what we can get at number 22. Because we're not going to move up. We're going to probably try and just take those players that we were mentioning earlier. So, um, Grosik going to be our first pick, I guess, considering he's supposed to go earlier. I think he's a low leap. Then we'll pick Rafalski. Then we'll take Scarlet in the second round. We now have two third round picks in this draft, so we might be able to get something else. Or I might just flip it away if I can. I'll see. But, uh, yeah, let's take Philippe Grosek here because I don't think any of these other guys are really worth it. These guys are like t likely top six defenders. Some of these guys are probably top nines. And Grosik could be a low lead. So, Philip Grosik, welcome to the Jets. And he is a low lead sniper. 65 overall. That's a massive dub. Massive dub. Now, what's interesting is I believe Michael Grosik, who used to play in the NHL, was drafted by the Winnipeg Jets. Um, it has a first round pick, I think. And that was the old Winnipeg Jets, obviously. But still, it's kind of an interesting note that we have a Grosik on our team. But yeah, that's a really good pick. I mean, that shooting category is actually looking pretty solid too. Um, and he is AHL eligible. So he could play in the AHL next year if we want to. Or we wait one year and see if he's NHL ready. Let's get into our second pick because we have consecutive picks here. And Bullion could be a low elite. So there is a chance he could be a really good player. But uh, we're going to go with Rafalski here because he looks really good. He's two years out apparently. Bit of a smaller guy. But he's got the goal scoring ability as well. So... We are basically bringing in potentially some more good like shooters and stuff to surround our playmakers. Rafalski could be a really good setup guy for other people as well. So Jody Rafalski from Croatia, welcome to Winnipeg. And he's a 69 overall top six. That's a high overall for that type of player. I like it. Very balanced. Like his shooting isn't even that much worse than his passing is. So he might become an all around really solid player. His weakest point, other than poise, is obviously his physical attributes. He's not going to be much of a hitter, but his durability is at least pretty solid. And he could win some face-offs if we want to try him at center at some points. But there's uh, some really good picks, I think, to this rebuild. Let's him to our next pick at 54, see if we can get that goalie. I also do want to take a look at the goalies that went earlier. Because, oh wow, there's another low lead that we missed out on. Interesting. What about those other goalies that went before our pick? There's another low lead in Yakala. So we did miss out on some other good low leads, but that's okay. There's a medium elite defenseman in Saren Haimo. Jeez, I wish I would have seen that. Yeah, his draft actually might be a lot better than I was expecting it to be. Okay. It looks like no goalies have gone off the board yet, right? Yeah, no goalies might have gone off the board yet, so they don't go off the board till later this round. So we were gonna take uh, we are gonna take Scarlet here. Even though he's not the highest projected goaltender, he's got the medium elite potential for sure. And he's younger than Alto, he's younger than Rodin, and Lamaru, and also Galiev. So hopefully that helps us out a little bit. So Logan Scarlett, the hopeful predecessor to one Connor Hellbuck, the future of this team. 47 overall. So yeah, he is going to take a while to develop, but that's okay. That's okay. We will definitely take it still because it's a medium league goalie prospects. Very good draft so far for our team. Let's him to our next pick because we have two third rounders. Maybe we could try and move up for another second round pick, but I don't know if there's anybody worth it at this stage. Um, let me actually... I can't call a timeout when it's another team's pick name. I was going to call a timeout before they made their selection, but what I was going to look at potentially doing is moving into this round because we have the two second or third round picks. Moved into another second round pick spot. We might be able to get somebody good if there's actually somebody worth it. Let me actually take a look for that, that first. Uh, view draft class. Is there anybody worth moving into this round for? Nordstrom could be a low lead defenseman. Warden could be a low lead sniper. Probably not, but I don't know. Hmm. I don't really want to go for more goalies. I might honestly try and trade into this uh, round just to get one of these guys. Nordstrom might have bounced back, but I doubt it. It would be nice to grab ourselves a defender in this draft as well. Yeah, you know what? We're going to try and trade uh, for this LA pick here quickly before they make a selection. 
I don't know if I can move up this much though. Uh, but if I gave you guys, actually, we didn't even have a third. Oh, did we use our third rounder, or did we not have a third rounder? We do have multiple third round picks for next year, so I could move this third. And what if I gave you guys New Jersey's third rounder next year? So two thirds, actually, yeah, two thirds. Maybe I could do a third and a fourth. Maybe a third and a fourth. And I don't have even a fourth rounder for next year. Let's just do the two thirds and see if we can move up a good amount of spots. Hey, perfect. So we have moved up. Hopefully it was worth it for one of those guys. Let's see if we could grab another low lead. So I think I'm going to go with Nordstrom here since he's... He doesn't look great, though. Hmm. But he is a defenseman. It would be good to get ourselves a defenseman in this draft just in case. And in Wharton, eh. You know what? I'm going to try Nordstrom. This might come back to bite me because we traded two third-round picks to draft this guy. But let's grab ourselves a defenseman here because... These other guys don't look that good. So I think Nordstrom has to be the pick. Even though Spike Franco could be interesting. It's a cool name. Thomas Nordstrom, please be a low lead. Low four. Oh, boy. Uh, that's not ideal. But, I mean, he is a 63, which is pretty good for an 18-year-old. So he could still develop into being one of those players like we have in Halifax, like a 77. But to move two third-round picks to get this guy wasn't worth it and watch we're gonna end up missing a little lead somehow warden was low six ah it was pro harkin who was a low lead i knew one of them had to be a low lead and we missed out on the round guy and la ends up uh with our pick actually i think that is right yeah i think so ends up grabbing the uh low lead instead <laughs> oh that was our own pick i think right there i'm pretty sure could be wrong Remember what was not because we gave up two third rounders, but LA ends up grabbing the low lead regardless because I think that's who we traded those picks to. But man, that sucks. And now we don't draft till 182. So this rest of this draft is going to be done pretty quickly. And then we will obviously get to that resign stage where we might make some changes, obviously, to who's going to be in our lineup next season. Guaranteed AHL top six. Damn, man. This draft class has dropped off a lot since our last pick. Might take a chance with Anton's Cheng. Hey, Cheng might be okay. Four years out, guaranteed at 19. Let's take a, a chance with uh, Dawson Cheng here. Medium 7th D. Yikes. Yeah, this draft class dropped off a lot when we didn't have any selections. But he is an OFD, which is cool. But he is 19. And our final pick of the draft. Like I said, I apologize if this episode ends up being very long for you guys. Walker Gordon, low top 6D, five years out. Might be okay, but is there any potential low leads we could draft here? This guy's 20 years old. Preston Cassian, he might be a low lead. Emre Ludeman, 20 years old. Rodney Lutowski, 20 years old. I think we gotta just take a chance with this guy. He's maybe a low lead, but he is 20, so he's probably not gonna develop, but we'll take him anyways. Low four. 56, another OFD. At least it gives us more prospects in the system. Maybe some of these guys get to play in the AHL. But I would say a successful draft, at least early on. Grosick, Rafalski, and Scarlett, really good picks. And then we made a mistake taking Nordstrom instead of that other guy. And then there's Chang and Cassian, who are not great either. So at least we do have some really good prospects to build into our future plans of this team. So... That was a pretty eventful draft, a lot of trades, and uh, some solid picks. Okay, scouting-wise, will we bring back this QMJHL scout? Yes, we will for now. I might honestly look at replacing some of the scouts in the offseason in next episode, but let's get to the resign stage here. And uh, basically, clean house. It should be pretty easy to let go of the players we don't want. So, yeah, basically, we're obviously signing Aiden Irving to his ELC for certain. I am going to let go of Veselainen. He doesn't really need to be in the AHL anymore. Galvis is going to get his ELC. Nilstorp will get his ELC even though he hasn't been developing too much. Just because we needed our youth guys obviously in the AHL. We are going to be letting go of VC. Thank you for your playoff performance. Fialbi as well. We're going to let him go for now. And Christian Fisher. We're going to let you go for now as well. Goalie wise, do I want to sign any these goalie prospects? I don't really know. I will come back to them in a little bit. RFA-wise, we are going to qualify a good chunk of our RFAs. 
or pretty much all of them actually for that matter unless they want two-way deals I'll just get them signed up right away because obviously we want to just hold on to all the young guys as possible so our AHL team does good Nick Kanan's probably gonna be leaving soon because he's not much of an HLer at this point or NHLer at this point Lundmark wants two-way as well but he might be a depth defenseman for us next season Lambert wants still two-way Chisholm two-way a lot of the players on this team want a two-way deal which is kind of nice we are definitely going to need a cap whale though because we have so much cap space and we need to find somebody that will uh, cost us like we could give them like five ten million dollars just to play third line minutes who knows <laughs> kupari wants 1.3 i don't think that's a bad deal for us and obviously we need to spend some money so 1.2 for rasmus kupari Cairo. Ooh, okay, Cairo actually wants to get paid, which I don't know why he wants to get paid, really. But I know he does become a good defenseman. He is still in RFA status after those three years. So, you know what? We'll give him a little bit of a bridge deal just to see how he performs. And then obviously, we could sign him long-term once that contract ends. So, let's do two by three for Christian Cairo. Uh, Gustafson, we'll give you what you want as well, but for one year only. And Chaz Lucius. Looks like he's going to develop well. Is he actually a third line in terms of role? He is. Okay. I might uh, do the cheese. But I don't want to do the 85% trick really. So I am going to give Chaz Lucius an 8 year deal. at uh, If he wants to accept it. 2.9. Just so we have at least our younger guys locked up. Sometimes this makes the players not develop well. Which is a little bit concerning. Actually, maybe I shouldn't do eight years because you'd be 31 by then. Hmm. Uh, maybe I should. Maybe I shouldn't. You know what? I'm going to just sign him to an eight-year deal. Why not? Why not? That way we don't end up losing him. Let's trust in the future. You guys say that he develops well, so might as well. Uh, hmm. Milich, I don't know if I should bring him back for the AHL. Dostal's definitely coming back because he's now technically our best goaltender. We could actually run Dostal and Milich in the NHL if we want to. So you know what? We'll do Milich. We'll resign him. And these guys, I don't think they're going to develop. Hmm. How much goalies do we have actually on our roster at the moment? So we have Dostal, Milich, Grant, and Dag. Obviously, Dag's the future of this team. So, and Dag isn't AHL eligible yet. So I probably should sign Ivanov. And let go of Prince. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. So I'll sign Ivanov to his ELC. So that way we at least have a backup for Grant in the AHL. Uh, but Gabriel Degg, I don't think is AHL eligible for a few years still. So we'll have to wait on that. And then we also have Velarde Michelli. Velarde's definitely getting qualified for now. And Matias Michelli, I like this guy a lot. So I think I'm going to do a 4 by 5 that way we could still maybe move him if our rebuild is still going on in those years. But let's do a 4 by 5 for Michelli. He's a young player, so might as well give him the opportunity with a bunch of young guys. Let's advance a day and see if anybody rejected. No, everybody's renewing, I think. Velarde's the only one, obviously, that's still qualified. Yeah, wow, everybody pretty much accepted. So yeah, Prince, you're gone, unfortunately, but best of luck to you. We have $47 million in cap space, and the only money is going to Velarde at the moment. That's kind of funny. In terms of our unsigned guys, should I sign some of these guys yet? Rafalski is AHL eligible. Hmm. You know what? I am going to give some of these guys contracts that we just drafted. Might as well give them an opportunity here right away. Is Cam AHL eligible? He is. We might as well give him one as well, because he isn't really developing unsigned. So these three guys will get ELCs to play in the AHL, so that way we have some young guys in the minors. Scarlett's going to be unsigned for a year, at least, maybe multiple years, just because uh, he's not going to develop well as a 47 scratch goalie almost. Okay, so our unsigned prospects have signed. We're at 42 out of 50 contracts, and we need $47 million to spend. That's a lot. I don't even know if we're going to really bring in much this offseason, but let's take a look at what we have right now. Actually, I didn't want to go to Anaheim. Jeez, what the hell did I just do? Let's go to our rosters. So at the moment, in terms of forwards, this is what our forward core would be looking like. 
Shifley, Chinnikov, Perfetti, Michelli, Velarde, Lucius, Gustafson, Kurashev, Misa, Kupari, Stankoven, Irving, Lambert, Lindstrom, all those type of guys. Actually, wait, that's a lot more than 12. So what's the cutoff point? 3, 6, 9, 12. Probably Brad Lambert. So if we move out Shifley, it will help us a little bit. If we move out Velarde's rights, it will help us a bit. We have a lot of centers. That's our main thing. Most of these guys play center. <laughs> so I would think we probably want to look at obviously not bringing back Velarde. Is that... Yeah, that's a lot of centers on this team. A lot. Jeez. Left wing wise, we have Michelli still. And that's it on the left wing side of things. Right wing wise, we have Chinnikov. But we really don't have a lot of wingers. Irving, I think, might you need one year in the AHL. We'll see. And then defensively, we don't have a lot either. So we could use a lot of different things in free agency. So. Or we could pretty much just run with what we have. <laughs> okay. So there is that. Let's take a look at what's available free agency wise. And trading block wise if we want to make more trades. Because like I said, I think it would be good for us to move out Shifley this offseason for sure. So we could free up even more cap space. But at the moment, we might need that cap. So... Because we are very low in cap space. Or very high on cap space, I should say. Um, I wanted to go to free agency. Let's see if there's any good young players out there. Maybe some that went undrafted. But let's start off with the goaltenders. Not that it matters too much. But let's still look through this anyways. See what we got. If there's anything intriguing. Or actually, maybe I'll just skim through this. And if you guys see anything intriguing, let me know. Uh, Seelovs is an RFA. Damn, if he was a UFA, I would have probably went after him. Because I know Seelovs is an okay goalie. Uh, Arvid Holm. I know he was a former Jets prospect. Colton Ellis is only 25. Him, Caden Primo. Those guys might be okay as just stop gaps for backup roles. If we don't want to use Milic. But at the same time, using Milic might be okay. Because we're not going to be a good team regardless. Um, hmm. There's also some guys like Gage Alexander. Who's a UFA. So there are some young 23-year-olds that we could end up bringing in if we want. But we already have a lot of goalies. Uh, defensively, the best is Chikrin. Obviously, we're not looking really for anybody that's super good. We're looking more for younger guys. So I'll look at potential players as well soon. As long as I don't forget. Yeah, there's not really a lot of intriguing players out there. Drew Hellison, 25 years old. RFA, damn man. If he was a UFA, another guy that we could have potentially looked at. Uh, Perunovic as a 27-year-old is not bad. There is Kolyachonik as a 25-year-old. Vladislav Kolyachonik might be an okay person to bring in for the defensive core. Yeah, I might honestly look into him. Alec Regula might be another one. Yeah, Regula is another one. So there is a couple younger UFA options just to like fill out our defensive core. So it doesn't look super, super bad on paper. Um, there's also Alexiev, I think, who's 26. Yeah, he wouldn't be a bad option as a depth defenseman. We head over to the right wing side of things. Alex Tuck's the best one available. Let's see any young players as well that we could sign here in this position. Because we don't have a lot of wingers. <laughs> Martin Kout. Martin Kout, 78. UFA at 26. He might be okay. Uh, Yessi Yolonen. I almost said his father's name. Yuha Yolonen. Or uh, Udenen, I think it's pronounced actually, as a Finn. <laughs> so there is some younger players out there that we could fill our roster with, which is very good. But in general, it might be just we rock with what we have almost. There's also a fan of 25 and 80 overall. Afanasayev is definitely somebody I would sign. Yeah, I think he definitely would be a good person to bring in. Great shooting category, solid offensive awareness. And if he gets a good playing time with our team, he could do well. So Afanasayev is definitely high on my list here. Then there's also Fortier. I believe this is Gabriel Fortier. Yep, Fortier from the Tampa Bay Lightning. 26-year-old UFA, so another guy we could bring in. Uh, Puistinen, who's 27. That's Valtteri Puistinen. And then in terms of centers, Anze Kopitar is the best. Interesting. Hmm. There's also Bemstrom, who's 27, which is not bad. He could be a good stopgap, potentially. Uh, there's Xavier Simino, who might be okay. He's 80 overall at 25. 
Looks okay. He might be a okay player for the bottom six as well. Mason Shaw, 27. Jack Studnika. Yeah, I see some options out there. Liam Foody, who's 26. Okay. Let's take a look at potential players and see if anybody went undrafted. That might be good. <clears throat> Is there anybody with good potential? No low leads there. We're looking for like lowly kind of guys. At the moment, I am not seeing any though. Which kind of sucks. Yeah, I don't even see any good potential guys. Damn, never mind. Uh, there is Sutton who's a low six, but that's not really anything. <laughs> yeah, there is uh, not as much in terms of good young players out there yet. Eventually, we could start uh, finding good free agents with that are like 19 years old. That are like low elite. Final thing, let's take a look at the trading block because this episode is already approaching 50 minutes because of all the trades. But let's see if there's anything intriguing on the block. I'll probably skim through this more. Like, Lindstrom could be interesting. He's only 26, but we need to figure out some trades probably with Shifley involved if we want to. But like I said, we might have to hold on to him because we are very low or high on cap space. We have tons of cap space available. And if we offload more of that, we will need to sign a lot of cap oils for this team. Just so we're actually cap compliant. There are some prospects in Carolina on the block. I like this meme, Six and Shea. So maybe we can work a deal with Carolina. They also have Markstrom there. So that's good to see a couple of prospects that we could potentially go after. Some in Colorado as well, but most of them aren't super great. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Bottom sixes, top nines. Eh. We're looking more for a top six forward prospects or top four defenders. Not really into the top nines too much. Some of them develop, but some of them don't. Or most of them don't, I should say. Uh, low nines, medium nines. Marilyn is a medium fringe starter. Wait, what was your potential? Low backup. Uh, Guff is already 28. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not really seeing a whole lot on the block in terms of that. So we might actually have to just scout out some trades in the next episode as well. On our own right. Uh, top nine, bottom six, low nine. Yeah, not really a lot of potential players on the block. There is some here in Ottawa. Roby Arventi, Zach Ofsichuk, Oscar Pedersen. And there's a couple in Ottawa. This is intriguing. We could also trade for future first round picks if we want to <laughs> with Shifley. But uh, it's about finding a team that's actually cap compliant and why not. I would take him on. Uh, Paul Harvey in Toronto, jeez. Uh, Kuzmenko's already 30. Yeah, a lot of older guys. Yeah, I'm not really seeing a whole lot in terms of prospects on the block, which kind of sucks. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Winnipeg Jets franchise mode. I apologize once again about how long this episode was, but I think we made some good headway in terms of our rebuild, in terms of getting good prospects in via the draft and offloading a lot of those big older guys. So yeah, next episode we'll take it to free agency. We'll also start up the season simulation likely, unless it's a long free agency period for our team, but we'll likely start up the season simulation as we begin the tank for whoever's first overall next year. So anything down below, and I'll see you guys next time.